security dashboard. All right, so when you first log in, you get your overall score of, in this case, B. You've got a timeline, you can pivot. The, the scores may change based on that date. Vulnerability score, anything lower than 100 is bad. So it's like school, 100 is good. You've got a collection of elements here, process hash, attack surface, forensic score, network anomaly, and then segmentation. If we jump over to vulnerability score, it talks about what is the vulnerability score? Well, it's an indicator of security posture in your deployment as it relates to software packages and vulnerabilities. So it uses CVSS score, it uses Microsoft Security Response Center and Red Hat Security Advisories. Um, it talks a little bit about how it's calculated. The data is updated every 24 hours when the threat feed is configured. And then it talks a little bit about how to improve it. Obviously updating and removing vulnerabilities certainly reduces your overall risk. And it calls out the agents that are supported. So you can see deep visibility you can, and also enforcement agents are required in order for you to get the vulnerability component. Now, when we look at the workloads, we can see that we've got a couple here and we can go into one and it calls out the package names, the versions, the vulnerabilities that we can actually pivot and then the CVSS version two and version three scores. Now we pivot off into the vendor or in this case, NIST, National Vulnerability Database, but it could be Microsoft or Red Hat as, as mentioned earlier. Process hash, we've got a good score here of 100, so not much to show but let's get into it. So supported agents, deep visibility, enforcement, and any connect. This is a process hash score gives an assessment of the consistency of a process binary hash across the system. So if you have HTTPD as an example on 10 systems and one system was different, we're gonna call that out. Talks a little bit about the score and how it's calculated. And how do I improve my score? Well, you make sure that you have consistent processes across your systems. Um, and then you can also ensure that this one that's an outlier is no longer running. Now, if we check one of our systems here, I'm not, I don't have anything to show, but it would also include the, the, the SHA or the binary value as well, the name, etc. You can pivot into your day. Let's go over to attack surface real quick here. Again, deep visibility enforcement and any connect are the agent types required. This is um, calculated over a two week period and it's really ports that are unused. Now, it talks a little bit about how that attack score is calculated and then what is included in the attack surface details. That's policy, so permitted, escaped, rejected flow counts. Uh, we'll talk about those in a, an, a, an upcoming video. You've got package details found associated with a port, including package name, process hash, CVEs, commonly hacked ports. How do I improve the system itself? Well, think about it. It's as simple as closing those unused ports. Now, if a port is required to be open, it's, it's only open every once in a while, then you could exclude that and it'll remove um, the the... Um, negative result it has on the score itself. So you can fix the vulnerabilities. You could also um, build out a, a rule that uh, mitigates traffic to a, a port that has a vulnerability associated with it. And again, these scores are calculated based on the agent or capability that's feeding them. Now, when we go into one of them, you can see here the port, the package name, the total permitted, CVE max score, the process hash. You can flip into virus total and do your investigation or go to Cisco Talos as an example or SecureX. You can leverage that interfaces, packages. If I scroll over, there's going to be some more detail. I can just look at unused ports here and then I could approve them. So all I have to do is check the box of approved give the authorization there and it removes that from uh, being uh, used to calculate my score. Uh, in this case, probably negatively if it's an unused port. Likewise, I just jumped into another system. You can see very much the same here. The goal is again, is to get that number and reduce that attack surface that the adversary is looking for uh, in order to compromise your environment. Forensic scores, we can certainly uh, modify this using the security 
uh, tab and then drilling into the forensic config. Deep visibility and enforcement's key here. What uh, is a forensic score? Well, it's forensic score is one of the security scores that when combined will give a simple assessment of your overall security posture. So this is one you wanna pay attention to. It certainly calls out um, the, uh, the impact to the score. So critical is a 10 and it gets into high, medium, low. And then there's a require immediate action. It talks about tuning the forensic score can be done with the forensic rules enabled for this scope. And I'll show this in a, a future video as well. Again, I don't have anything to show here. If we were to go into workloads, we've got a score of 100 here. So no events to show. Network anomaly detection, any connect deep visibility and enforcement. Network anomaly score gives you an assessment of whether there are symptoms of unusual significant amounts of data being transmitted. So this is another good one. If you got popped, this is a good way to, to capture that. Um, there might be something going on here like data exfiltration. Tuning your network anomaly score can be done by adjusting the forensic rules and network anomaly events. Nothing to show here. Segmentation. This one here is as you start to move to application segmentation or micro segmentation, it's going to use escaped, rejected, and permitted flows to determine how successful you are here. So a segmentation compliance score is an indication of how effectively your enforcement policies are in place, right? And so it's going to look for the, the reject and escaped flows. Um, these are a sign that enforcement isn't reliable and should be investigated. It talks a little bit about how the score is calculated. Um, in regards to agents, all the agents are supported here, which is pretty cool because it's using flow data to do the assessment. And that's it. Security dashboard.